Okay, well, thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Thank uh, uh, Dr. Engelbretson and Dr. LaProd and Smith and Nephew. A lot of this will be a, a, a repeat uh, information. A lot of it we've heard this morning uh, already, and I think uh, key to learning is repetition. So, again, we'll proceed with meniscal root and radial root tears. Is it a missed epidemic? I have no real disclosures. So again, uh, we've touched on it multiple times today. For proper uh, uh, function, it must maintain uh, its biomechanical integrity. Root injuries and uh, really radial tears close to the root really changes the biomechanical properties as we have seen. And these injuries can really occur from uh, acute traumatic injuries such as in the last uh, presentation and also degenerative tears. Uh, and uh, we'll briefly touch on uh, iatro uh, iatrogenic injuries to the meniscal root specifically the anterior root. Great uh, article here in AGSM um, discussing meniscal root tears uh, allow the meniscus to really become extruded outside of the tibial plateau margin, thus increasing the contact forces and uh, really changing the biomechanical um, properties. Approximately 50 to 70 percent of the total weight transmitted through either the medial or the lateral compartment is transmitted by the meniscus in that compartment. Root tears and radial tears close to the roots are difficult to diagnose, uh, and especially if you are not looking for it. It is unfortunately quite often missed, especially in my town where uh, a lot of general uh, community orthopedists, um, you know, get MRIs and they don't scrutinize them as much as they should, and uh, these injuries are missed. Uh, so I think it's important to have significant increased awareness, and uh, you definitely need to scrutinize your MRI uh, in the coronal and the um, um, axial plane, and we'll show some examples of that. Proper diagnostic arthroscopy also when treating other injuries in the knee as uh, they the commonly occur with other, other injuries as we'll also briefly touch on. The past treatment certainly would consist of a partial meniscectomy the majority of the time, uh, still indicated in certain uh, uh, patients, especially the elderly degenerative tears where they're uh, malaligned. Biomechanics uh, um, altered and contact forces increased, uh, thus increasing the significant risk of degeneration of the cartilage surfaces. So in my opinion, and, and I believe in the literature today, it's certainly important to try to restore, if at all possible, and, and that's uh, what we're seeing great examples of today. And again, a root avulsion, which has been touched on multiple times today, uh, increasingly is recognized uh, by scrutinizing the MRI, and it can lead to inability to resist the hoop stresses that we're all familiar with and cause this meniscal extrusion that you can see uh, on the um, picture on the right and the MRI cut on the left, you'll see the radial split there on the sagittal uh, plane of the, excuse me, on the coronal uh, cut of the MRI, which is classic and you definitely have to look for it. Due to the MRI cut, sometimes you'll miss it on the axial plane. Here's another study uh, in JBGS in 2008, which looked at uh, a complete root avulsion and 25% increase in peak contact pressure, which is very similar to a complete meniscectomy and the root repair restored uh, joint pressures to the intact uh, uh, state. Radial tears close to the root certainly cause a, a similar biomechanical change and thus increase in the contact forces. And again, uh, attempts at repair should definitely be performed. You can see the radial split here, uh, again, in the coronal uh, cut of the MRI, which is definitely makes it more challenging uh, in regards to repair. There's a great study by a colleague of mine, Dr. Padalecki here, with the help of LaProd's team a couple of years ago, uh, looked at radial tears of the posterior horn medial meniscus, uh, basically was biomechanically equivalent to root avulsions. He looked at it in multiple uh, cuts, three, six, and nine millimeters of distance away from the actual root, and uh, uh, most of his data proved that in situ repairs uh, can reestablish the posterior anchor point, thus improving the load distribution in the medial compartment, at least at time zero. Again, by uh, the younger future Dr. LaProd and his team up here um, looked at uh, avulsion of the lateral meniscus root and, and again an adjacent radial tear increasing the contact pressures um, and uh, again repair significantly improved those pressures. And again, it should definitely be considered as an alternative to complete meniscectomy or at least partial meniscectomy. Iatrogenic root tear, so this is a great uh, case report, um, KSSTA, uh, looking at an intermittently nail that was placed for a tibial shaft fracture. The patient continued to have pain even after the fracture had healed. The nail was removed three years later. The pain continued. Not until seven years later was it found uh, that the patient had a significant anterior root tear. Uh, and after proper treatment, 
and uh, uh, meniscal, repa meniscal repair of that anterior root, uh, the pain resolved. Um, in this case, they had a uh, lice the adhesions of that avulsed anterior horn uh, from the anterior capsule in order to properly restore it to its native, uh, native state. This, this patient, I believe, was back to full uh, activities after five months. So the prevalence of these injuries, uh, this is a pretty amazing uh, number of uh, uh, root tears uh, to, my, uh, to my eyes. Uh, 50, 50 patients out of 673 patients were found to have a root tear. So it's uh, in, in 7.4% of those patients, that's quite high. And uh, 23 had a medial meniscus root tear, 26 had a lateral meniscus root tear, and one patient had both. Uh, 17 had a partial meniscectomy, and 31 had a suture repair. And uh, 30 of, of these uh, had a concomitant ACL tear. Interesting uh, to note here, which is certainly not something that I take to heart, is the lateral meniscus root tear um, was 10.3 times uh, more likely to also have an ACL tear, and the meniscal uh, medial root tear was uh, 5.8 times more likely to have a cartilage de defect.